let me keep my note of that or did you just get that first impression at the beginning and then just drop off or later pick it up later? No, I, I think I got the most, the biggest attention was due to the protesting and everything that took place and then, and then once the, uh, uh, once the uh, charge was made and I just pretty much just uh, lost interest in it. Oh, okay. So your first, um, I guess, focus was you heard about the shooting, right? Mm -hmm. And then you heard that he was not arrested at the time. Yeah, you know, I, I think that came out as I was watching the news. I arrest in that, in okay. that case and and uh, you know why what well, I was trying to I was interested in why they were protesting right. and, uh, and and then that got my attention in terms of your first impressions about the the protesters um, did you come to the conclusion that that was wrong that they were protests or did and you, you almost I believe you used the word like join not like you're physically joining right, right. in mind were you joining like you couldn't understand yeah, but well, that's what I'm trying to find out from you, sir. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah, in my mind, I was I was trying to understand. I mean, I, you know, when the police made it, read the made, made they did their investigation. I assumed that was it. Okay, and and that would have been enough. Um, but when the, the protesters protested and they got people's attention to look into it and investigate, um, and I was confused about why that was going on. Why was why why was uh, you know why were they uh, why was the invest state attorneys investigating it? But evidently, they, whatever they turned up, which I don't know what it was, but whatever they turned up, made them believe that there should have been an arrest, and they made the arrest. So, yes, sir. So. Um, from the aspect of uh, focusing your attention because of the protest, did you come to the conclusion or opinion that that was a bad thing or that was a good thing, or no opinion whatsoever? Well, uh, no. So I say that they. It turned out to be a good thing, I guess, because I mean, there's we're we're, we're doing a better, uh, getting deeper involved in what happened and trying to learn trying to learn the truth. Evidently, there's 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 some discrepancy about what what took place. Okay, so you did not um, automatically think that that was a bad thing that there were protesters out there wanting at least for something to happen, investigation, a complete investigation to occur. No, I don't think it's a bad thing. No. Okay. What did you understand, what I'm trying to find out, and not fully asking you, what did you understand the protests were about, that they wanted, like, an uh, investigation done, or they wanted him arrested, or what did you understand the protests were about, if you can remember? Well, I, I, think, I think they were questioning why there wasn't an arrest, and I think they, were, they wanted to see an arrest made in this case, and at least to get, to, 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 for, to have an opportunity for justice and yes, to further, further go into the, the play here. So you started focusing on it when you, the protests, um, and in terms of the protests, did you have, um, did you feel the protests based on what you remember, was it local people, national people, or a combination, or? Well, I, I believe it started off as local people, but then some national people got involved, and, and some pretty big names got involved. Yes, sir, and do you recall any of the big names? Oh, well, Reverend Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, okay. too, the Kareem Brown. Uh, wh what did you think of that, in terms of somebody from out of town coming in and, and uh, being involved in the protests, did you form an opinion as a result, like they shouldn't have come, or they should, or no opinion whatsoever? Well, um, no, I know I have no opinion. I, mean, I feel like that, that was their choice to do with what they felt they needed to do to help out, and, and I don't know if they were asked to come. I don't you know if they came voluntarily. I don't know. Okay. And as a result of that, did you pay closer attention to the case after that? No. Okay. So did you kind of drop off after that, after he was arrested? Yes. Okay. Um, did you pay attention to uh, any national aspects as a result of the case? No. Okay. Um, not at all whatsoever? No. Okay. And um, after he was arrested, and there, did you, were you aware that there were court proceedings in the case? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. But I don't remember what all they were. Though. Sure. They were, so. Did you pay attention to any of that no. at all? Any hearings, uh, what they were about, or who testified and who didn't? No. Okay. Um, do you watch any national news? 
at all. Yeah, I watch, yes, I do. Yeah. What, what, ABC, usually like by the Okay, and that's what I was going to ask you next. <laughs> what, what particular station, you know, some people favor Fox, CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS. I think I've got everyone coming. Yeah, yeah, ABC. ABC okay. is more of yours? Yes. Okay, uh, not Fox or CNN no. or... And do you remember any aspect of the case from ABC? Uh, yeah, there might have been some on. I don't remember any of it, but they might have, they might have picked up a couple stories sure. here and there. But okay. I don't remember. All right. Call. Now, you, we're coming now, hopefully, closer to the time we're today, uh, specifically when we got the summons, which is about three, four, five weeks ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did that kind of th get you thinking more about this particular case? Sure. Okay. Tell me if you could. Um, did you do any research as a result of that in terms of like what's going on in the Zimmerman case now or did you pay more attention to the court proceedings or? Uh, no, I tried to think back about what had taken place. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I didn't know what, I mean, I, I knew that, I, what I think the research I did do was to find out what, when the trial was starting. Sure. It was going to be on the day that I was starting to report. Okay. So you, were, you didn't know for sure whether you were going to be a potential juror in the Zimmerman case, but you knew it was around the time that yeah, so you I'm, got the summons, so you kind of put two and two together? Yes. Okay. I looked, right. So I looked up to see when it was, when it, when it was going to start. All right. Other than looking up and your research uh, when the trial would start and you came to the conclusion that you potentially were a juror in this particular case, did you do any further research on that? No. And the research you did, was that online, I'm assuming, or did you go back and, uh, I'm assuming you hadn't recorded it. I think I went online. Okay. Yeah, I did a Google search. Yes, sir. And uh, that was the other aspect. Do you, do you uh, on a routine basis, use Google and like yes. everybody else? Sure. Okay. Um, do you have any like Facebook or other type of social media, Twitter? Uh, Just Facebook. Okay. Uh, and, and Facebook, did you come across this story at all in terms of what had happened here in Sanford? On Facebook? Yes, no. sir. Uh -huh. Okay. Did you communicate with anybody about the case on Facebook or Twitter no. or whatever other things no. you use? No. Okay. Um, have you had any discussions at work about the case? No. Even back in February when it happened, uh, or even about the protests? No. No. I, I, I work in another county, and the, I figured the people there would I don't even, well, I don't talk about my personal life anyway when okay. it works, so. All right, so you, don't, you didn't talk about this at all no. with anybody. How about with family? Did you have any discussions with family about this? We might have talked about it back, okay. in, back at that time when I was interested. Yeah, I apologize for getting personal, you don't have to tell us who, but, but obviously don't mention any names of, sure. of your children or, or, or wife or anything. Uh, but did you have a conversation with your spouse or kids or anything about the case? Uh, yeah, both. Okay, all mm -hmm. right. And um, let's, let's take the spouse first. What do you recall talking about the case, about any aspect of the case? Uh, I, I really I can't recall. I, mean, I, would assume, I, I would assume that it was the things that I was interested in back at that time. Okay. That we were just talking about that. You know, the, 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 you know we, we might have talked about why, why things were happening the way they were. And, okay. And, you know. and my question is, uh, back in February when it happened, you say, oh, uh, there's, how did you refer to what had happened to Trayvon Martin? Did you refer to him as a kid or do you remember or, or did you have any questions with talking with your wife why it happened or didn't happen? Well, I would I, I refer to him as a teenager. We have a teenage, I have a teenage uh, uh, stepson, so. You do? Yes. About the same age? The same age. You know, so did that kind of, in your mind, kind of focus on that? Yeah. Okay. Bit. All right. How about from the aspect of Mr. Zierman? Was there any discussions about Mr. Zierman or about uh, the fact that, uh, you know, he shot a, the teenager? Did any aspects about that? And what I'm trying to get is what kind of discussions you have. You know, I have discussions with my wife and kind sure. of talk about the case or about things, did you talk to your wife about the case? Oh, again, I just can't remember all, you know, exactly particularly what we talked about. I mean, uh, um, you know, I, I just, I can't recall. I mean, I just okay. Yeah. How about with your kids? And how old are your kids, by the way? Well, I, I have a six-year-old living with us, and I have a, we have a 26-year-old, 28-year-old. Okay. <laughs> is he out away in college or just living somewhere yeah, she, else? She's she away. is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Did you have discussions with both of them? No, just the, just the, the teenager. And that was because he lives here in town, and, and, and when I say in town, in Seminole yes. County. And, okay. Uh, what discussions do you recall uh, having with him? Was it more of like a lesson type thing, or was it more, do you remember what aspect of the case you discussed with well, him? And I, I think we talked, it was kind of a lesson thing. We talked about it being careful, you know, I mean, um, um, you know, one of the things that, that I, you know, I can, I'll bring up, I, I recognize, I realized that the way Trayvon Martin was dressed, 
caused some speculation about his about him and, and, and the situation. And my son dresses the same way. I mean, he some, wears what a hoodie? He'll wear, he'll wear a sweatshirt with a hood. And, okay. And um, you know, so we cautioned about you know about you know about that. With, that with he might son. to some person might it might be a. Tell, tell me what I don't want to put words in your mouth. What yeah. did you tell your son about the hoodie aspect? Well, of well the yeah. I, I mean, um, you know that. You know, be just just be just just be. Uh, um, Careful, you know, just cautious. Uh, you know, it can be mis. I don't know. I don't know why, but people wearing that outfit can be misconstrued and you know, misinterpreted. But they're, you know, it just doesn't, doesn't look to me. And I'm an older person. It's not something we would normally do. And sure. we just want to be cautious. You know, okay. Be careful about. And I gather since your kid's 16 years old, that he say, "Well, hold on, Dad. Uh, you know, it's not against the law to wear a hoodie." No, he didn't. He didn't react that way. No, he, okay, he understood. He understood the situation. He understood that it was uh, that he had to be careful. And, okay. And, Did you prevent him from then on wearing a hoodie? No. Okay. Yeah. Has he worn it since then? Yeah. Okay. You just told him to be mindful that somebody else may think that there's something wrong with it. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you can remember talking to your son about uh, about the case itself? No. I think that was the only thing we really wanted to be concerned to address with him. Um, other than that aspect of it, in terms of uh, Trayvon Martin wearing a hoodie, was there anything else about his attire that, that caused you concern, no. based on what you saw on TV? No. Anything else about um, Trayvon Martin that caused you concern that you've read or seen on TV about that you can recall? No. How about anything regarding George Zimmerman? Anything about that you've read or seen on TV about him? No. Do you recall seeing any pictures on TV about the case? Yes. Okay. What pictures do you recall seeing about the case? Uh, well, I I saw uh, I didn't see the pictures of, um, of Mr. Zimmerman's injuries that he sustained. Okay. Um, I do remember I do recall seeing those. Okay. What pictures do you specifically remember seeing about injuries? Uh, his his face and his, and his the back of his head. And what were your impressions when you saw those injuries? Uh, that he sustained those during the attack that he that he alleged. Okay. You use two words in terms of, I'm not sure I understood what you're saying, that, that he was attacked, you're saying? Right. And you said alleged. Yes. Okay. Why did you use alleged and attack? Well, right. because, because up, to now, up to now, I don't know what really happened. Okay. So uh, and that, that's what I, my question was. Did you formulate an opinion that based on observing those injuries that he was, and, and I'm going back to what you were saying, he was beaten, that you automatically assume that based on those photographs you saw that he was beaten? Yes. Okay. Um, and you used now the word alleged, meaning, can you expand on that a little bit? Well, I'm just trying to be careful because I don't really know what happened. And, um, and until, and, and, and until everything, all the evidence in, is, is heard in, in the case and arguments are all made in the case, I don't really know what happened. So I don't really have an opinion on what, what happened. Okay. So in other words, you don't know what happened other than what you're going to hear in the courtroom. You agree that what's important is what you hear in the courtroom, not what the news is reported? Correct. Yes. Okay. Did you come um, to, did you listen to any of the recordings that were, that came out of this case? What I mean by that is the 911 recordings or anything like that? Like I said, I knew they were, I knew there was recordings, but I don't remember the particulars and in, in in the conversations that took place. <coughs> okay. You don't remember any aspect of it, any of the recordings themselves? Right. Okay. Yeah. And listening to him at the time. I'm afraid if I tried to say something back to you, it wouldn't be accurate, and that's what we're concerned about. Yeah, I appreciate that, sir. I'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm just trying to find out what you know, and if you, can, you don't remember something, it's perfectly all right okay. to say you don't remember. My question is, did you, in listening to the recordings, whatever recordings you heard, did you form any impressions as a result of those uh, recordings? No, no. No, I mean, I can't remember what the recordings were, so I'm okay. not say I did, so. <laughs> How about recently, in, in terms of any uh, proceedings in court, did you listen to uh, any of the proceedings in court recently, within the last month or so? No. Okay. Any other aspect of the case that you can remember now that you say, well, hold on, I've had some time to think about it. Even now, while I'm yeah. asking you questions, <laughs> anything about that that you can recall at this time? Uh, I appreciate the question, but I can't think of anything. Okay. If you were picked as a juror, you're sitting there as a juror, you're listening to the evidence, and something comes out. And I'm going to make something up. It didn't happen in this case, but let's assume that there was a case involving a car, right? Okay. And witnesses said the car was blue. And you said, hold on. There was something in the news, but the car was described as being red. Which would you?
you rely on in, in, in arriving at a decision in the case? What you remember in the news of the car being red or what the witnesses said about the car being blue? Whatever happens here in the court. Okay. So my question is, when you're sitting as a juror, you know, we don't, hopefully we have good memories and we remember things. Can you agree that what came out of the media should in no way whatsoever impact your decision? That's correct. Can you agree with that? I agree with that. Okay, because, what, you know, it, we don't ask you as a juror to cut, you know, we don't have like a magic thing that we that you put over your head and it erases everything you've heard. Right. But, but do you understand that what's I important is? Yes, I understand. Okay. Do you always believe that what's on TV is accurate? In terms of the news? Uh, I, not, not always, no. Okay. Do you believe most of the time it's accurate? I believe they try to be accurate most of the time. but Okay. I, yeah. And how about in the newspaper? Do you believe that everything they reported is accurate? Not everything, no. Okay. In terms of uh, the news on TV and, and the newspaper, do you recall, aside from the news, do you recall commentary about it by attorneys or other people commenting about the case? Uh, you know, I can't recollect. I'm sure there was some, but I don't remember. But but Do you remember were, any uh, attorney involved in the case having any kind of news conference or just talking about the case? Well, I, I know that there's been news conferences by the attorneys, but I don't remember what they what they were. Do you remember which attorneys were involved in that? Well, I recognize uh, Mr. Amara, so I okay. don't know if he, right. he, was, he, he had some press conferences. Yes, me. sir. Good. So you've heard him on having press conferences, sure. I'm assuming. <laughs> now, we on behalf of the state have not had press conferences. We hold that against us because we didn't have any press I, conferences. I don't hold against anybody, no, sir. Okay. Do you remember any aspects of what Mr. Romero talked about? No, I can't remember that, but, but, but they were back then. So. Okay. Let's assume you're picked as a juror, okay. and you hear some evidence, and then you remember, oh, well, Mr. Romero said, you know, ABC, but I haven't heard that. Would you hold it against Mr. Romero because he previously said something about commentary and, and then it didn't come out that way? No, I'm, I'm going to judge. I'm going to make all my decisions based on whatever happens here within the courtroom. At this time, you believe you've got an open slate. In other words, it's you haven't formed an opinion whatsoever, even leaning a certain way. That's correct. Okay. Not. You know, we have opinions, but then sometimes we're kind of leaning this way, but we want to keep an open mind. No. Are you in that way whatsoever? No. Okay, so you're not even leaning one way or the other. That's correct. Okay. Uh, you believe in the concept in terms of presumption of any, in other words, you believe that a fair trial for both sides? That's correct, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Okay, not just for the defendant, but also for the state? Absolutely. Okay. If I may have a moment. Sure. Oh, Your Honor. What did you think about the fact that, that Mr. Zimmerman was not charged originally? What, what impressions did you form once you uh, saw that on TV? Well, I, I guess when I first, when I first heard it, um, uh, I, I felt, I, I guess my, my opinion or my impression was that the police department did a thorough, a thorough job at the scene. and. and and uh, their discovery was 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 enough to make a decision that there wasn't you know, that there wasn't a charge. Required. Yes, sir. And later you made a determination, or you wrote, I'm sorry, that you found out that he was charged. Yes. Did you start thinking about, well, hold on, earlier the police didn't charge him. Now all of a sudden it's charged him. You go, what the heck happened? Yeah. Okay. What did you think about that? Well, I, I think I'm, I said earlier, I. I and I, I don't know what took place during the investigation, but the investigation must have uncovered something that that um, made them real, made them think, rethink the uh, the circumstances, and then they came up with a charge. So I mean, I just I did, all I tried to figure out was I don't know the answer, I don't know why. Okay. I was just confused by it, but yes, it sir. happened. It happened. So. Okay. I may have a moment, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. West. Thank you, Jacob. Um, my name is Don West. I'm one of the attorneys for Mr. Zimmerman, and you said you recognize, you do recognize Mr. O'Mara here, seated to my left, and of course George Zimmerman at the end of the table here. Do you know if you've heard lawyers for the uh, for the Martin family speak at press conferences? Um, I don't recollect. I don't recollect recalling nothing particular about press conferences in general, regardless of who gave right. them, That's stands correct. out in your mind. That's correct. Okay. 
completely um, forgettable, I take it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you get that. <clears throat> All right. So um, let me just kind of put some parameters around the kind of news that you've gotten and how much of it along the way. What I, what I take from your comments is that you pay particular attention to the case early on, once it really hit the media, mm -hmm. and then not so much, at least not in particular, over a fairly extended period. And maybe it's back um, because of the trial coming up and you being summoned. Is that a, a fair, fair overview? Okay. Um, any way to estimate, if you were just trying to pick a number, how many times you may have read a story or uh, seen something online or heard this case talked about in the radio? No, I couldn't estimate any number. After the initial sort of um, media part, you talked about the demonstrations. Uh, did you pay any particular attention when you listened, when you heard the case mentioned or saw a headline in the newspaper? During that time? No, af after that. No, no af after the arrest. No. I know, as you've said, um, you don't yourself hold a, a, an opinion, or certainly not a firm opinion, about what happened in the case. Have, have you expressed a, a view or a slant in your discussions with people? No, I usually tell my friends that I can't make a decision or, or opinion or, or judgment until I've heard so I, I, so I've heard all the other thing in, in mm -hmm. presenting the case in the court. So. Well, of course, there's no way to hear everything unless you are that's actually true. on the jury. That's true. I mean, you know, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, um, have others expressed opinions to you that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Others have got opinions, and, and I just say I just can't give one. So. Mm -hmm. um, have co-workers or family members expressed an opinion to you about whether they thought George Zimmerman was guilty or not guilty? Um, I know co-workers haven't because I haven't talked to them about it. Um, and uh, no, I don't think, uh, I don't think my wife has, has given me an opinion one way or the other either. Does she follow the news more closely uh, than less, you? Less than I less. When you, um, when you had the conversation with your stepson, uh, was that to talk about guilt or innocence in the case or this notion of how one needs to be sensitive to how one appears no, to others? No, it was the appearance. Yeah, it was not about the uh, guilt or innocence. Do you think that the article of clothing, a hoodie, in and of itself is significant in the case? Um, no, I don't think it should be. Mm -hmm. Is that a term that you became familiar with um, because it was connected with the case? Is somehow that was associated with the case, or did you always feel the, the term hoodie? Oh, that, no, that I, got yeah, I think I, I think it, that's probably first I heard of it was from the case. And some of the demonstrations were specifically called that. That's correct. Yeah, sure. And you were aware of that sort of became a symbol of some of the public rallies and protests. And sure. such. Do you yourself have any opinion, any reason to think that a hoodie, a hooded sweatshirt itself, is actually a significant part of the case? No. Um, back in February, March of 2012, when this first sort of hit the, the national press. There were issues, questions raised about why George Zimmerman wasn't arrested that you've talked about here today. Mm -hmm. And then you commented that sometime later, after there was an investigation, that obviously he was arrested, charges were filed. Right. Did that make you think that somehow the Sanford Police Department's investigation was shoddy or incomplete or biased in some way? 
No, I mean, I, I don't know why they, you know, what, what the investigation determined or anything. I just, I don't know, I don't know why all of a sudden there was an arrest, or it wasn't an arrest to start with and why there was an arrest after. I don't know all that. Did you ever try to figure out what, if anything, happened between the, the um, Sanford Police Department not making the arrest and then the decision some period of time? Later. I was wondering what, if anything, in Djibouti, I forgot to sell it. No, I didn't, I didn't look into it. Mm -hmm. What caught my attention, why I'm asking you, is you made the comment that there must have been or maybe you think there was something else or something different that resulted in the charges being brought when they hadn't been brought before? I, 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 assume, there, I assume so because there was a change in the, uh, in the outcome. Mm -hmm. So I assume there was something that caused that. Looking at the uh, case since then and information that may have been released uh, in, the, in the public, have you formed any opinion as to what that evidence might be or if in fact there w is any more evidence that would have formed the basis for the charge? No, I haven't formed anything. Mm -hmm. You may have suspected, hey, if he's charged, that must mean there's some more evidence. Well, I assume there was something else. Mm -hmm. I don't know what. Um, is that something, though, that that you can compartmentalize and not carry with you into the jury room when you're considering the evidence brought before you? No, I assume that if it's not presented here in the courtroom during the case, then it's not applicable. Or it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay. So you won't speculate as to what additional evidence? It's not relevant. It's not relevant. The speculation is not relevant. You feel pretty comfortable that you could make your decision in this case without speculating, without um, considering information you have, whether true or not, from any other source than what you hear in this courtroom? That's correct. Sure. Sorry, just give me just a moment, please. Thank you. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh, let me, just a couple of general things. Did you attend any of the events that you talked about that you knew took place? No. Or uh, whether for support or just for curiosity? No, I'm not supporting. Or um, sign any petitions no. or any of that? And I, you haven't watched television to actually participate in hearings that we've had. You haven't seen actual Correct. testimony or, or such. Correct. If I could have just one more. If you'll remain seated for just one moment, and Council, when you're ready, please approach the bench.
Um, at this time, court will be in recess for these proceedings until um, 9 a.m. And um, council, um, I am just going to go downstairs and give the admonition to the uh, jurors that are waiting there. And um, council will also be down there for that purpose. Yes.